Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to soften edges of a photo with Photoshop Elements. So, we'll end up with a photo that has a nice gradual fade around the edges like this. Let's head over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 11 for this video, but it will work in other versions as well. The first thing that we want to do is make a duplicate of our background layer. We'll do the changes to the duplicate layer so that our background layer stays untouched in its original state. In Photoshop Elements 11, they changed how the panels bin works. Down in the lower right of the window, there are four panels that you can choose from to display in the panels bin, which runs down along the right edge of the window. The four choices are Layers, Effects, graphics, and favorites. Since the layers panel is one of the choices, you can just click on that and the layers panel will be in the panels bin. So if it's on effects, just click on layers and then layers will become active over in the panels bin. Now just click and drag the background layer onto the create a new layer icon. It's the first icon at the top of the layers panel. You can let go of the mouse button and an exact duplicate of the background layer is added to the layers panel and it's named background copy by default. Next we have to make a selection around the outside of our photo. Go up to the select menu and click on the top choice which is all. And the marching ants appear around the outside of the photo indicating that it's selected. The next step is to transform our selection. In this step, we're going to tell Elements how far from the edge we want our fade to begin. But first, look way down in the lower left of your screen. Make sure that Tool Options is active. You can tell if it's active because it will have a light gray box around it. If the Photo Bin is active instead, just click on Tool Options to make it active and you'll get the Tool Options box. We want to be able to see the Tool Options displayed for this step. Go up to the Select menu again and choose Transform Selection from the menu by clicking on it. A bounding box with eight handles appears around the photo. Also, a green check mark and a red No symbol appear below the photo. The tool options change to transform options. We're going to focus on the width and height fields right here. Right now they're at 100 percent. But first make sure that the constrain proportions box is checked right here. If it's not just click on it to check it. Now double click inside of the width field right on the number 100 to highlight it. Now type 85. Because the Constrain Proportions box is checked, the Height field will also change to 85. Notice that the bounding box and our selection change to reflect the new size that we have typed in. Click on the green check mark to commit to the change and the bounding box goes away. For the next step, we're going to feather the selection. So go back up to the Select menu and choose Feather. The Feather Selection dialog window appears. There's just one choice to make in the window, and it's the Feather Radius in pixels. The larger the number that you put into this box, the more gradual the fade will be. Let's type in 10. Click OK to commit to your change and the dialog box will close. Notice that the corners of the marching ants are slightly rounded now that we added a feather to our selection. The next step is to invert the selection. Right now the area inside of the marching ants is selected. We want the edge of our photo to be selected, the exact opposite of what we currently have. We can change it to what we want by going up to the Select menu and choosing Inverse. You can see from the marching ants that the edge of the photo is now selected. Now we only have one step left, and that's to fill our selected area with white. Go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Selection. 
From the dialog box that appears, click inside the first field labeled Use. And what do we want to use to fill our selection with? White. So click on White from the pop-up list. And then click OK to commit to your change. Let's get rid of the marching ants so we can see what we ended up with. We don't need the selection anymore, so go up to the Select menu and choose Deselect. And that's it, we're done. Your results will probably have a different amount of fade than my photo because the results depend on the size and resolution of your photo. The other two things that determine your end results are the percentage that we used in the Transform Selection options and the amount that we entered into the Feather dialog box. So if you want to try out different settings to see how they look, here's a way you can do that. First I'm going to rename my layer with the effect on it. To do that, double click right on the name to highlight it, then you can just start typing. I'm going to name it 85T because I transformed the selection by 85% and 10F because I gave it a 10 pixel feather. Press return or enter to accept. Now turn the visibility of that layer off by clicking on the eyeball to the left of its thumbnail. Next, click and drag the background layer onto the create a new layer icon again to duplicate it. This time, instead of 85%, I'm going to try 95% for the transform selection amount. So I'll change the name of the layer to 95T10F. And then hit return to accept that name. Now I'll go through all the steps again. So I select all, and then I choose transform selection and I type in 95 this time instead of 85. Click on the green check mark, go up to the select menu and feather, and I'm going to use 10 pixels again. Say OK, and now I'm going to invert the selection. Lastly, I'm going to fill the selection with white. And then deselect. Now I can see what the first version looks like compared to this one that I just did by clicking on the eyeball next to its uh, thumbnail again. And that's what the first one looked like. And that's what this one looks like. Now let's try one with a different feather to see how that looks. So I'll turn off the visibility of our last layer and duplicate the background layer again. This time I'll try a 20 pixel feather, so I'll name this layer 85T20F. And I'll select all, and then I'll choose Transform Selection, and I'm going to put 85 this time. I'm going to feather the selection, but instead of 10 pixels, we're going to use 20 pixels. And then I'll inverse my selection and then fill it with white and deselect. Now to see what my very first version looked like, the one at the top here, I just show the visibility by clicking on the eyeball. That's what we had with the first settings when we had a 10 pixel feather and then if I click it off I can see the last one we did with a 20 pixel feather. So there's 10 and there's 20. And then if I want to see this last version compared to the uh, 95 transform, I just turn that off and on. Once I decide which one I like the best, I can drag the other two to the trash icon in the layers panel. So I kind of like this last one we did with a 20 pixel feather. So I'll click and then shift click. So I select the two that I don't want and then just click and drag them to the trash. That's the trash can that's located in the layers panel, not the uh, computer's trash can. 
And that wraps up this video on how to soften the edges of a photo. Make sure you go over to my website and sign up to receive my free videos and cheat sheets of 20 essential Photoshop Elements tips. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.